Good morning. Welcome to Asbury South, United Methodist Church, broadcasting live on 91.1 FM. We also welcome those of you who are worshiping with us on YouTube. It's a great day, my brothers and sisters. I'm Tim Baumgartner, and I'll be your worship leader this morning, and I'm excited to be here. And you should be too, because we are in the house that God built. And this morning's service will be full of excitement. The praise band has returned. Yes, I've traded in my bells for that bass guitar back there. So you're all safe, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, we also have some special guests this morning to join Greg. And a lot of hard work goes into these efforts, so we hope you enjoy it. I have some announcements that are full of more exciting things. First, I'm pleased to inform you that, until further notice, masks are optional at Asbury Church in all areas except in the overflow area, which is reserved for anyone who prefers to sit in a mask-only area. The children can choose to wear their masks or not, but any adults who are working with the children are still required to wear their masks. Here's some more exciting news. Eight years ago, Oscar Bickard Jr. answered a call from God and started the Tuesday lunch and community store here at Asbury Church. And on Tuesday, March 15th, we'll celebrate this anniversary with a special lasagna lunch with a salad and fresh fruit. And the store will have some exciting offers along with a delicious dessert. So come and celebrate this milestone and be sure to thank Oscar Jr. and the Tuesday Lunch and store volunteers for this important ongoing ministry. Please be sure to check your mail folder in the donation room if you have one. Please get your mail. I have a feeling that this message is maybe to me from Kathleen. Probably. So that's not very exciting. But anyhow, here's something. Here's, here's some exciting news. As we continue to pray for Jim Byers and his speedy recovery, Jim looks forward to rejoining the Monday morning Bible study on March 21st. Here's another chance to gain more insight on the Word of God. On Sunday nights at 6.30, come join us for dinner and a Bible study. They've just started a study of the book of Samuel, and if you come, you will enjoy a great dinner, even better fellowship, and some truly inspiring conversation. Sometimes we leave with more questions than answers, but that's what happens when you dive into the scriptures. Come and join us to get your belly full and learn more about the ministry of Jesus Christ and the word God gave us. Sunday nights at 6.30. The Education Committee will be meeting tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Please come and share your ideas. I plan to be there. Now, if that doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. That's tomorrow at 6, so please be sure to join us in room 10, I think in room 10, to share your ideas. Okay, I have one last announcement we can all be excited about. I'm pleased to announce the 2022 season for the Friday Morning Cafe begins on March 25th and the following Friday, April 1st. It will continue the first and last Friday of each month until winter. Our traditional full-service breakfast menu will be available this year for a $6 donation, and we want to thank Terry and Lou Casperson and their wonderful group of volunteers who work very hard to make this happen. Thanks to all who donate their time for this worthy cause, because they make the best breakfast in town. There's a lot of exciting things happening on this corner here, so I hope you don't mind that we're going to be mixing it up a little bit as we continue to ask the good Lord to give us the wisdom to deal with code. We look forward to some exciting things here at Asbury, so be sure to stay tuned. Now Diana Sexton has a few more announcements. Well, surprisingly enough, what Tim just said ties into what I'm gonna do, and we didn't plan that. So, good morning, by the way. <laughs> um, I have some announcements um, concerning the pastor and the prayer chain and some everyday things that go on here at the church. 
During office hours, please send prayer chain requests to the church office. All requests after 1 p.m. Monday through Friday and all day Saturday and Sunday should be sent to Sherry or to myself. And if by some strange reason you don't have my phone number, please see me after church because it's plastered all over the southeast side. <laughs> Pastor Sherry's hours. Please help Pastor Sherry out by not calling or texting her before 11 a.m. unless it is an emergency. Wednesdays are her sermon preparation days, and she would appreciate limited interruptions that day. Her office hours are Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and of course, she's always available after 3 p.m. And obviously, if it is an emergency, none of this applies. However, to elaborate a little further on this announcement, how many of you have been awakened in the early morning hours or the late hours of the night by a, your phone alerting you to a text or an email, and then you can't go back to sleep? None, none of you? Okay, that's what I thought, okay. Sometimes people send things out and you can't, uh, you can't go back to sleep and they don't realize the timing. All of us have certainly lost track of time due to COVID and all the restrictions, restrictions excuse me, that have taken place. Many in this congregation are asking when we are going to start doing more ministries. Well, the answer is now. So committees need to be reestablished because some of them haven't been working during COVID to begin planning and Pastor Sherry needs to add this to her schedule. We are extremely grateful for what she brings to Asbury South UMC by serving on the West Ohio Conference Board of Ordained Ministries, the West Ohio Conference of Cultural Guide, and Capital Area South District Committee on Ministries, to name a few, from United Methodist Church. And locally, she is the founding clergy, one of the founding clergy members for TURN, which is the Ultimate Resource Network, which is concentrating on improving the 43232 and the 43227 zip codes. All of this will help Asbury South move forward. My last announcement, and this I'm kind of excited about. You are all familiar with the State of the Union or the State of City addresses that the President and the Mayor's give, right? Okay. Well, on Sunday, March 27th, we will have a State of the Church address. And you will learn many things I'm sure that you didn't know. So I'm sure everyone will be enlightened and hope you all come and listen to the State of the Church Address on Sunday, March 27th. Thank you. Thanks, Diana. Please join me in our call to worship. Brothers and sisters, get excited. Brothers and sisters, sing God's praises. Christ is our salvation. Brothers and sisters, praise the Lord. Christ is our light and our life. Amen. Okay, well, if you like music, you're at the right place today. We've got the praise band back, and um, we've got Terry Lou and Jeff on vocals, Ron on the guitar, I'm on the keyboard and vocals, and we welcome Tim on the bass guitar. <laughs> Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the way of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures. 
treasures of the earth. There's no way to measure what you're worth. Crucified, laid behind a stone, you live rejected and alone. Like a rose trampled on the ground, you took the fall and thought of me above all. Oh, you were crucified, lay behind a stone. Rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall and thought of me above all, like a rose, trampled on the ground. the fall and thought of me Amen, and thanks be to God. We are truly blessed every day, but today is a special blessing. Thanks be to God. Won't you bow with me? God, we thank you for the blessing of this day. We thank you for each person who uh, was able to maneuver the time change and still get here in time for worship. We thank you for each person who heard your spirit calling them to be in worship. And we pray that your spirit would be set free within this space and within our hearts and minds to move as the spirit so chooses. May we follow where you lead that each one of us would receive the blessing you have for us on this day. God, we thank you for the gift of music that we plan to use so much today. May your music speak your peace, your truth, your love, and your honor to us, that we would be fully prepared to go out in the spirit and represent Christ, not just on this corner, but wherever we find ourselves. Be in our worship, be in our praise, be in us. This we pray. Amen. We will now have Vicki Finnegan, and if the children would come forward for children's moments.
Okay. James, can you come hold this for me? I might need two hands. <laughs> I'd appreciate that. He's my kid. And uh, we got another big kid sitting right over here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to do this without looking at my notes. It's been a while. And, uh, but anyways, good morning. How are you guys? It's so good to see you. Can you tell us your names? Hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. This one's Declan. Hi, Declan. <laughs> and we're, so, we're so glad to have you here. Oh, and, and who's the big boy? Yeah, uh, Me. Billy. Billy, is that, who is he? Do you know him? Um, yeah. Is he your poppy or grandpa? <laughs> okay, well, we're glad, we're really glad you're here. And today we're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer a little. That's something we say in church every single Sunday. And there's one line in it that I'm going to talk about. And it says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And have you heard of heaven? Have you ever heard about heaven? Henry, what do you know about heaven? Can you tell me? Huh? Peace. Peace. Okay. Anything else? Love. Love. Reunion. Reunion? Yeah. I like that. That's Resting. a good one. Huh? Resting. Resting. <laughs> uh, what about, do we think about visually? What are the things, you know, there's a song that's called I Only Imagine, what it'll be like there. And we can only imagine because we just know a hint of everything. But when you've seen pictures or thought about heaven, what have you thought about? The, no, the, the view of what it would look like. If you look at it, have you thought about that? If you, we hear about golden streets, we hear about angels singing. Um, some people think about clouds up because they're up high. Uh, there's a lot of visual things. And guys, I brought a picture for you today. Here, can you give them each one? You can take this picture home. And this is one picture's person of maybe what heaven looks like. When I looked for these pictures for you, most of them didn't have any people in them. They just had streets and trees and beautiful things that we could color. But if you notice, there's people down here in the water and sitting on the bank. And I think sometimes you guys got it really good today because I was waiting to hear golden streets and all that stuff first. And I asked somebody some questions like that, and that's what they said of, what do you think of when you think of heaven? You can sure tell you're here in church because you thought about the things I wanted to talk about. And the things that, you know, God fits us for heaven to be there. And while we're on this earth, he's gradually fitting us to be there. And there's a song, my favorite verse of my, not my favorite hymn, but I, this verse is my very favorite Christmas song. And if you know it, this verse, join me and sing it. And it goes, be near me, Lord Jesus. I ask you to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. And that's what he's doing on this earth. He's fitting us for heaven. And, you know, when we accept Jesus, when, when we have Jesus come in our heart and we say, I believe in you, forgive me for the things I do wrong and help me, he does. And he gives us a thing. He gives us things like 
this church already talked about today. I'm going to read the list. These are fruits of the Spirit that we get from Jesus. And I think I wrote them on here. Yeah. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, which is like patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. On this earth, we'll never be perfect and do every one of them. But if we strive for that, and we don't earn those, we don't earn heaven. God gives it. It's a free gift. But we can do our part now by having a positive attitude and energetic effort to live the way Jesus was our example to teach us when he was on earth. And, you know, you can do that by reading the Bible, praying, and being around other people, examples. I think I heard that in the call to worship today about watching the examples of faith that have been given to you. So when you go home, you can color that. And it's so good to have you here. And I hope to see you again, Henry. Okay, and thank you, everybody. Thanks, Vicki. And the kids, Billy, little Billy. Good job. He got to be a real big Billy. Let us prepare our hearts and minds as we turn to Scripture. Today's Scripture is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 through 21, and chapter 4, verse 1, based on the New Living Translation of the Bible. Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I have told you often, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things, and they think only about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. We are eagerly awaiting him to return as our Savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends, for you are my joy and the crown I receive for my work. This is the word of God for the people of God. introduce Greg Seelenbinder and our special guest Tara Novi Crawford and Aaron Minnick with a song called Holy City.
Amen, and thanks be to God. That was outstanding. I don't know about you, but it's usually easier to do a solo than to have two people trying to play together, and you just made it look so effortless, so thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, Open your word so that we might be reminded of your promises to us and your call upon each one of our lives. May it be your word and your word only that is shared and received today. Amen. You know, one of the things that occupied my mind a lot when I was a kid, um, at least in some of my younger years, I might not admit to it in my older years, um, but was I liked being a copycat. Especially, yes, especially when, kids, um, close your ears, the times when I would copy my dad and it would irritate him just seemed to be the most fun. Or the times when my mom would say something and I would do what she did. And not, not being rude, but just the fun of imitating, using her words, even if I didn't know what they meant. It was great fun for me, although I get now as an adult why not so much fun. But somehow, especially as children, it seems profoundly satisfying to simply imitate the different speech patterns, vocabularies, gestures, and behaviors of other people. And often when you're a child, it really is a tribute, even though it may not feel that way, because you tend to imitate people that you look up to. Now, we're not talking about like junior high school when it's a different kind of imitation. I got in trouble for that too. So note to the kids, imitating the teacher behind his or her back will get you in trouble. That is not what we're talking about here, though. Think about, particularly when you were a child, what it was like to imitate your dad or your mother. A lot of times, um, I, even though it tended to get on their nerves, I didn't get in trouble for this. I was known to clomp around the house in my dad's big shoes because it made me feel like my dad. Yes, I was a copycat imitating a role model. If you think about it though, some people don't grow out of it, and some people are actually really quite good at it. Now, some of you may be too young to remember, because I just barely remember this, and that is the truth, I am in church, but I barely remember this person who was made famous by his convincible, convincing portrayal of a lovable drunk. Some of you here remember the guy called Foster Brooks? He was a very good copycat, and I remember that from being a child because I remember thinking, what's so great about being a drunk until my father finally pointed out to me, he's copycatting. He's not really drunk on stage. He's pretending he is. <sighs> Mind blown. But then think about all of the comedians that come in all different ages, and I mean ages of life, because Foster Brooks was pretty old when I knew him. Um, but then think about some of the younger comedians, like even though um, I don't really know him because I'm older than he is, I hate to admit it, um, I come from a town with a famous comedian. Um, I forgot his name all of a sudden. <laughs> Dave Chappelle, <laughs> sorry. But I grew up, this age is me, Back um, in Saturday, watching Saturday Night Live when the Not Ready for Primetime Players was on. And then through the years, think of the comedians who are famous for imitating or copycatting people. For example, Eddie Murphy and his great copycatting of Stevie Wonder. Any of you ever seen that? Oh, yeah. He does a wonderful job, doesn't he? Um, what about Tina Fey, the look-alike copycat of Sarah Palin? It was uncanny, wasn't it? What about, um, think about just those three people, Foster Brooks, Tina Fey, Eddie Murphy. These are people who used their great gifts and got paid for it, copycatting people. So whether we're talking about children playing games or adults who've made a uh, living imitating other people's, other people, um, think also about what it takes to make a good copycat. Why, for example, uh, was Foster Brooks good? Why was Eddie Murphy good? Why was Tina Fey good? And why are some of us that did it as children not getting paid to do it? Eh. Part of it is practice, but part of it is the ability to watch somebody else and mimic what they do very well. Most of us, if we 
think about it for a moment. Think about somebody, whether when you were a child or as an adult, somebody that you have imitated. Because we learn by imitating, don't we? For example, how do we learn to talk? We hear our parents and we imitate what they say, or we hear people around us and we start imitating the sounds that they make. If any of you remember when you first started trying to learn to dance, how do you dance? You imitate what people do. We imitate things all the time. Whether we are good or bad at copycatting depends on a couple of different things. One is our skill by paying attention and being able to do what we see, but the other is our choice of who we copycat. Those we should call our role models, good or bad, they are our role models. Now think of this. If you have ever witnessed an impersonation that was really mean or mean-spirited, or if it was an impersonation of somebody who was a detestable person, think about how that imitation often fell flat. It made people uncomfortable. It was awkward at best, right? Think about how we affect the world when we make the mistake of copycatting somebody who is not a good role model. The role models that we choose and how we copycat them, how we imitate them, makes all the difference in the world. When I was in college, a group of us had gathered in the lounge supposedly to watch a movie, but if you've been in college, you really know it was for the guys and the girls to socialize in a space where we weren't supposed to be unless we were watching a movie. Nobody saw the movie. We weren't doing anything wrong but talking to the people that you were attracted to. And at that moment, one poor guy made the bad decision that he was going to copycat one of our professors. Except his copycatting was kind of mocking. It wasn't a nice mocking. He wasn't good at it, number one. But the other thing that was awkward was that it was a beloved professor. And everybody in the room, it seemed, had that professor and loved this man. And here's this person standing up, I think... I could be wrong, God forgive me, trying to impress a girl that he liked. How do you think it worked out for him? It did not work out well. It was very awkward. People just sat there, and we're talking about college kids with nothing to say. And then we just kept talking like nobody said anything. It was very awkward. But how much better would it be in the world if the world did that when Christians did bad examples of copycatting Jesus? Wouldn't it be better if they just paused, pretended they didn't notice, and moved on rather than judging Jesus by the bad copycatting that we do? Something to think about. In the morning text, Paul is encouraging members of the church at Philippi to become imitators of Paul and the other leaders in the church. Now, it's not egotistical like it might sound. That is not what's happening here. Here, part of what was already read to you. It says, dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. I have told you often before, and I say it with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. When he says, pattern your lives after mine and those who follow in our example, you have to question what example is he talking about? So if you know anything about Paul, you know Paul is all about Jesus. His example is Put your everything in your imitation of Christ. Put your everything in living for Christ. Put your everything in being disciples and spreading the word. And follow my example, because Paul wasn't arrogant. Um, follow my example and all those, because he's working with a group, right? They're out there changing the world. Follow them. So can you just for a, a minute imagine why he's challenging them to follow him and those of like mind of his? Why do you think? And he kind of tells us why, doesn't he? Think of what he says afterwards. There are people who are really enemies of the cross. What does that mean? 
What do you hear in that? Think about that. There are those who are really enemies of the cross. He's basically saying, be careful who you pattern your lives after. Imitate me and those who follow the example of Christ. So what's he really saying there? Follow Christ. Be careful because there are all these people in the church in Philippi and all around that region and in the church today. They profess Christ. But in their living, in their behavior, if they're imitating anybody, it doesn't resemble somebody who looks like Christ. Think of people who say things and do things in the name of Jesus that if you go back to the scriptures, you realize Jesus would never say or Jesus would never do. I hear people who are Christians spewing hate of all kind, and then they talk about doing things in the name of Jesus. Jesus was an honest person, but I don't ever see him professing um, hate anywhere in the scriptures. And if you found it, please let me know because I have not seen that. Jesus isn't spewing hate. So if you are, you're not a very good copycat of Jesus. Don't just um, copycat anyone. Be selective in who your role models are. To be good copycats, you have to have some skill, which means you have to pay attention to what they're doing, but you need to pick good role models. We learn how to behave or how to misbehave by watching the people around us, by imitating those around us. Just like we learn to speak by imitating the sounds we hear coming out of the mouths of our parents and those around us, even in the church, we learn how to behave or misbehave by following the example that we see. So we have to be selective because who in the church is perfect? Huh? Who said? No one. We can all make mistakes. We're all in this, hopefully, for the long haul. So we need to be selecting role models. We need to go back to the scriptures and look for cues on how to behave. We need to always be in tune with the Holy Spirit who's always there trying to direct us if we just listen. It was true in the days when Paul was addressing the church in Philippi. He needed to warn them, pay attention to who you follow. Pay attention to who you listen to. Be sure that the one that you're following is following Jesus. Because if a leader, whether it's a pastor or whatever, if they stand up and say something that doesn't ring true to what you know in the scriptures or what you've heard people teach about Jesus, do some research, and the first research is the easiest. What do you do? Bible. Even before the Bible, what do you do? Who informs how you understand the Bible? Okay, you guys know this. Who informs how you understand the Bible? Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, number one. But number two, it depends on you knowing what the scriptures say, doesn't it? Remember what we heard last week? Even the devil quotes scripture out of context. But even the devils quote scripture. We have role models in church. Pick good ones and then be good copycats of them. That's how we represent Christ in the world. I'm going to pause for just a second. I'm almost done. Let's also, we have to, in, in picking good role models, we have to know how to identify who the enemies are. Because he talks about the enemies, those that are headed for destruction. In the scriptures... Who is Paul referring to? He can be referring to the Jews, those who have rejected Jesus. He can be, and more possibly is referring to the Jewish Christians who have said they have adopted the ways of Christ on one side, but they absolutely demand that the so-called Christians have to conform to the ways of Judaism particularly in their church. It's not our issue. We have our own issue. But in their church, the issue was circumcision. And Jesus said that's not the sign of salvation. The Holy Spirit is your sign of salvation. And then there's this whole group that says, we believe in Jesus, but you still have to do the old stuff. And Paul is saying, it's the way of the cross or the way of the law. It, they don't mix. So... Are they following the people who believe in Jesus and the cross? Or are they following something that demeans what the cross means? 
And it's Paul's words, not mine, that says they're headed for destruction. Do we want a copycat role models that are headed for destruction? No, I don't anyway, because I'm not endeavoring for destruction. It may come, but I'm going to fight against it. And I'm going to call on the name of Jesus to do it because Jesus is my role model. Yes, but I look at what's in the scriptures because Paul was a person. These were people. Jesus was a person in a different time period. These people came a little bit later and their world is different than ours, right? But we can still find clues on how to live. We can still find clues on who are good role models, and we can still take those cues and be good, become good copycats of Jesus. The believers in Philippi needed to be careful to choose good role models. And today in 2022, we need to be careful to find good role models in the faith because the behavior of too many churches today has revealed them truly to be enemies of the cross, picking and choosing what they want to be true about Jesus, creating Jesus and God in their own image by crafting a savior who's acceptable in their terms, regardless of what the testimonies of the scriptures might be. How many times do you hear people just throwing the scriptures out? Instead of throwing the scriptures out, you have to figure out how the scriptures apply. And there's a difference. I hope you hear the difference. You don't disregard the scripture. You figure out what in the scripture applies to your specific situation. And then what do you do? You apply it. But you need good role models in all things. As the church in 2022 struggles to find itself and right itself... We as individuals need to look around at people in the church as well as people outside and consider honestly who are our role models. Not who sound like good role models, but who are we actually patterning our lives after? And then if we say we're patterning our, patterning our lives after Jesus, are we doing a good job being copycats? Or are we just saying it and not doing it? All questions to consider during this season of Lent, of reflection. The Church of the Philippians saw good and bad role models. And for the bad role models, in our vernacular, Paul says, just no. Just don't. Or back at one of my favorite sayings from a few years back, when you see a bad role model, remember what you can say? Talk to the hand because the head's not listening. Reject them. You don't have to listen. You don't have to follow a bad role model. Jesus is always going to be there. The Holy Spirit's always going to be there. Make sure that we as individuals and a collective follow the right role models, not just with our words, but with our actions, and then copycat those good role models to the best of our abilities. God gave us the ability to reason and the Holy Spirit to figure stuff out. We just have to be diligent day after day because there's an enemy out there encouraging us to follow all the wrong role models. And the world is certainly buying into that hook, line, and sinker. Consider who your role models are. Are they good examples? Or are they really enemies of the cross that still have the audacity to proclaim Christ? Remember, we can be honest about whose behavior indicates that they are enemies of the cross. We don't have to follow them. We don't get to judge them because that's not our business. But we also don't have to accept them as role models, and we don't have to follow them. At the end of the day, do what Paul said. Pick someone that you know is Christ-like and look at the scriptures and be a good copycat of a good Christian. It's up to us to decide who the good Christians are and to pick good role models and then follow them to the best of our ability. That is what makes a difference, and that is how we represent Christ in the world. You want to be a Christ? Copycat him. Can you do it? Especially if we get together and work together, can we do it? Okay, that wasn't convincing. Can we do it? All right, that was better. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to go to God in prayer. This morning, we pray for 
the family of Ben Dozier, that was Billy Graham's older brother. Uh, ben passed away last Sunday, I believe it was. Um, we also want to pray for Spencer Barton. He is Kathleen Dalton's high school friend who is hospitalized with serious health issues. We want to pray for Sam Tamby's family and the death of his cousin, Fatu Dean. Um, uh, she was in hospice care, and she passed away peacefully, so we say thanks be to God for that, but we want to be in prayer for his family. Um, we want to remember to be in prayer for Jean Gifford. She thanks everybody who's been reaching out. She wants you all to know that her phone number is still the same, and you are welcome to call her. She's in her room most of the time, but this is a praise. Um, when I talked to her last night, she said she is now able to at least uh, go out to have meals with her friends at the, at the table. That's huge. If you remember, she was very depressed because she was in her room all the time. So we say thanks be to God for that. Um, but we still pray that she, she is aware of God being with her um, at other times, not just while she's at her meals with her friends. We say praises that Jenny Snyder's surgery went very well on Tuesday. Prayers for continued recovery, and it's good to see you today. I don't see you at the moment, but I know you're here. Oh, she's in the back. There we go. It's good to see you here. Thanks be to God for that. Um, we also say prayers for healthy, safe, and fun travel for Linda Scott and her son and his family. They left yesterday for a vacation um, in the United Kingdom, including Scotland and Ireland, it was a COVID-delayed vacation, and they were nervous about traveling, so they appreciate prayers. Um, they should be, they're on their way, and hopefully they will, They uh, would, let's try that again. They would appreciate your prayers when they come back, and I think she said, I can't remember, I think they're going to be gone about a week. Don't quote me, but I think that's what she said. We also want to remember Dick and Sue Sloan's grandson, Sean Adams, praises for the first step um, that God has answered, and he has a diagnosis of diverticulitis, which is treatable. So it's better than they expected. It may not be fun, but it's treatable, better than they expected. And then just pray for him and his family and the medical team as they figure out how to, to best treat his diverticulitis. We have prayers for Debbie, uh, for Elaine Glenn, which is Debbie Glenn's daughter-in-law. Prayers for positive, which would be good, test results. Um, and then praises that Margaret Johnson's uh, cataract surgery went well also. Um, thanks be to God for that. Um, other prayers. We have a long list of prayers, which says something. It says that we recognize uh, the need in the world and God's action in the world. So... Continue to pray for all the victims of human trafficking, especially keeping in mind that the average age of the trafficked adolescent is 14 to 15 years of age. Um, ongoing prayers for those in Ukraine who are caught up in the war, prayers that God could simply, um, God's peace could in, infuse that region. Just continue to pray because that's all we can do. Um, also, I have other names we want to lift up. Carolyn Gilbert, um, we want to lift up Billy Graham's niece, Diane Vance. We want to remember Jay Smith. Um, so these are all prayers that we want to lift up to God. So let us now uh, bow before God. God, we are so thankful that you are an amazing God. You are a loving God. You are a patient God. You are a giving God. And we accept as truth Whatever you give us in whatever time frame you choose to give it. We pray today for the individuals who we have lifted up to you. We pray for those people who believe and we pray for the people who are finding it hard to believe right now. We step out on faith because we trust that you right now are handling each situation, that you who love each person we named better than we can love them ourselves, that you are already working to bring about the best for them. Help us understand when the best that is your best isn't what we expect and help us see you at work in every situation. Help them see you at work in every situation. God, help us 
believe always that your way is the right way. And when we are not sure, help make it clear who those role models are you are sending for us to copycat. And then give us the energy, the desire, and the determination to copycat them to the best of our abilities. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are able and choose to, please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has given his all for us, including his life, his love, and his great example for us to follow. Let us be copycats of Christ, and in love and gratitude, let us also offer ourselves and our resources to the one who welcomes us in his house. I invite the ushers to come forward to collect the offering.
Holy One, our light, our salvation, and our purpose for living, accept this offering as evidence of our promise and commitment to follow your example and to live our faith in accordance to that. Amen. have some more special music. I'd like to introduce Greg Sealenbinder once again, and Tara Novi Crawford, Aaron Minnick, and little Billy Klein. And you're all to sing along too. That your spirit has been touched by the day and by the music that you might be prepared as you go forth consider who your role models are and consider the other piece for who are you a role model may that be the thought that guides you as you go forth from this place in the spirit of copycatting Christ, may you go forth to love. May you go forth to serve. May you go forth and be the church. Amen. <laughs> 